Al-Fatihah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. UMC members, deans and directors, uh, Puan Sri Masrah Abidin, members of the session in the hall, and members of the session at large via Zoom and probably uh, YouTube. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the Murabi Talk Series number one for 2020. Uh, this Murabi Talk Series is an initiative by the university to invite different personalities to give talks on issues of concern to the university, the ummah and the general public. For this inaugural series, uh, on behalf of the rector, we would like to welcome our honoured speaker, Tan Sri Professor Emeritus Muhammad Kamal Hassan, back to IIUM. Uh, it's a bit weird to say that, Prof. Eh? Because to most of to most of us, you ne you never you never left, exactly. you never left. Okay. Uh, I told Prof. Kamal just now he's just fallen into our trap when he agreed to the topic today. Ujung dia ada tulis introduction. That means he has to come back some more for the follow up session. Okay. After that, he wants me to give a one line introduction. I said, I have not done that in a long time. All I can say is that Prof. Kamal uh, has been with us and to merely read his academic qualification would do serious injustice to his uh, contribution and we hope he will continue to contribute. Uh, we are very thankful for his willingness to come today. Our topic for the day is the Malay concept of sejahtera from an Islamic perspective and introduction. So to help the session, standing in for our Tansri Rector, who is resting, or we hope he is resting. <laughs> so I hope he's resting. We have Professor Ahmad Faris Ismail, Dean of Kulia of Engineering. As the moderator for our session, he is worked with and for Prof. Kamal Hassan, and he's the right person to steer our session today. A few reminders. Number one, I hope members in the Senate Hall, could you please turn off your cell phone or put it in silent mode? Our session uh, will be for about one and a half hours. Lah, jadi, eh? uh, we will uh, let Prof. Kamal to talk for about one hour, and then we have the remainder of the time for question and answer. Uh, due to the nature of the talk, Prof. Kamal susah nak bagi respond to questions in a very short way. So probably we'll take one question from Zoom and we'll take one question from the floor in the hall. Uh, can I remind the audience in the hall to refrain from joining Zoom? If you are in this hall, please refrain from joining Zoom because our technical audio feedbacks would disrupt our session. Uh, okay lah, semua dah letih. All audience in the hall will be treated to lunch after the session. So, without further delay, I hand over the microphone to Professor Ahmad Faris to start our session. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <coughs> Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala syarfil anbiya wa mursalin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in <coughs> Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alihi Muhammad So uh, We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For having uh, this I would say very uh, Important um, Session uh, this morning uh, Let me welcome uh, Everybody, um, our guest, uh, the top management of the university, my colleagues, <coughs> and especially, of course, our guru, maybe the chief Morabi, yeah? uh, <laughs> Professor Kamal Hassan. Uh, so, uh, I guess uh, for him to start the Morabi session uh, is befitting upon him uh, to lead the way. Uh, and, uh, uh, of course, being also with the university since day zero, day zero, not day one, still day zero or day minus one. Minus zero. Yeah, minus zero or minus one. I think that is how Prof Kamal with the university. He has been with the university. I mean, he, he drafted the concept paper for the university. 
So I guess uh, he is uh, the only person in this hall that know uh, the real vision and mission, reason uh, for the establishment of the university. Uh, and of course, we are the, his students. And what we heard from him is this university is very unique, tawhidic, ummatic, you know, rahmatan lil alamin. So I think this is what we have been learning from him for the past 37 years. You know, so, so inshallah today again, I think he will extend uh, that, uh, I mean, uh, paradigm, uh, that concept. Uh, and today he will be talking about the Malay concept of sejahtera from Islamic perspective. And Prof. Kamal, I think this topic is very relevant. Uh, the reason being, I would say that, uh, uh, number one, uh, we already have a sejahtera center in our university. Okay, that's number one. And number two, of course, uh, the sejahtera concept also is derived from our falsafah pendidikan kebangsaan. If you, I mean, if you read the falsafah kebangsa, uh, pendidikan kebangsaan, it started with uh, holistic um, education system, integrated, and and to produce uh, holistic students. And this is also in line with uh, OSIC, or our university strategic plan on uh, producing holistic student and holistic staff. And as a matter of fact, I think uh, the university also is embarking on the uh, academic review to uh, enhance this aspect of um, holistic uh, personality, holistic uh, graduates. And, uh, and, and to that effect, I mean, I think we have had at least a draft sejahtera academic framework that we have to start working on it. And of course, also with the <clears throat> recent uh, recognition by United Nations also, we are now a uh, regional center yeah, of expertise for ESD, for Greater Gomba. So this concept now become more, more important for us, like become another amanah for, for the university to carry on. So, so I think with that, we look forward to your uh, discussion and deliberation on this uh, Malay concept of uh, sejahtera from Islamic uh, perspective, inshallah. And maybe you can also maybe touch a little bit on your vision 2077, because Prof. Kama also now is leading uh, the way uh, towards our vision uh, 2077. So maybe how sejahtera so can go into this vision 37. So with that, the floor is yours, Prof. Thank you yeah, thank you. This one, okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lah. Wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah. والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم O oh our Lord we do not have any knowledge except that which you have taught us indeed you are the all knowing the all wise ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. Uh, Professor Dr. Ahmad Faris, uh, yang berbahagia Puan Sri Masrah Abidin, um, representing our beloved Rector Tan Sri Emeritus uh, Zulkifli, um, who is uh, supposed to rest and must rest um, for at least uh, three months um, so that his soldiers can do all the work. Uh, his lieutenants, uh, his generals, his foot soldiers, including myself, I'm willing to work also on his behalf, inshallah. <laughs> After you take up all the work, then I will do the rest. <laughs> we all pray, and I continue to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his speedy recovery. 
Uh, in fact, there are many members of uh, my family who are also uh, not in good health, and so uh, praying for them and including Tansri is, uh, is uh, something that I have been doing very regularly. And we hope, inshallah, he will take the advice of the doctors, uh, including my humble and sincere advice that um, uh, this, what happened to him, although it's not something very, um, very, very serious, is, is a reminder from, from the Almighty that his body has a demand upon him. Uh, you know, in the hadith of the Prophet that uh, says that uh, so many other things have a right upon you, and your body has a right upon you. So you should not be committing zulm upon yourself. So this is a form of uh, his, his dedication, his passion for work, um, and all that it is fine, but, but there is a limit to it. And so this is an indication uh, from the Almighty that you have to take, um, uh, you, have, you have to have a break. In fact, I was telling my wife and also others, I wanted to, uh, to not to continue as rector when I reach 60. Uh, in this university, but it went on until uh, 70, uh, 70 or... Uh, <laughs> uh, I lost count. But, uh, well, anyway, so I hope, inshallah, Tansri Zul uh, will really make use of this uh, period uh, to really um, uh, take care of his heart and his body, inshallah. Uh, thank you very much. Um, oh, sorry, I, I need, of course, to recognize my other colleagues and friends um, who are here today. Um, Professor uh, Datu Ahmad Zailan, Datu Wan Hilmi, and also Datu Abdul Rahim, who I understand is uh, uh, on Zoom. Um, it is, okay, you cannot get his image here, all right. Uh, uh, and then also, uh, who else do we have? Around the table, of course, we have uh, Dr. Zul, Dr. Zul, and of course, Dr. Lihana, Dr. Zainuddin, um, our, our dean, our dean of the, of the Kulia, uh, and of course, Zurina, alhamdulillah. And also, Prof. Uh, Noor Farida uh, told me that she'll be in hospital, but she'll be following the program, but I'm sorry that uh, she has to wait for half an hour with her PhD st uh, postgraduate students. Thank you very much for inviting me to this, despite uh, this uh, constraining circumstances. It's always a pleasure to, to be here, and as I said, my body may be outside, but uh, the soul is always with IUM. Um, Now, the, the title, I, I am going to read this paper because I didn't have time to, to work on a PowerPoint. And of course, uh, it's nothing compared to what Tansri uh, is able to do. I mean, his, his uh, infographic skill is, is marvelous. I am uh, two decades behind him. So I have uh, uh, maybe three decades. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I, have, I have my uh, paper on... on, on uh, in the laptop, I didn't have any time to get the um, thumb drive in. So please bear with me. I'm going to read through quite fast, uh, and at the end I will tell you what uh, is going to follow. Um, human beings, irrespective of religious beliefs, generally aspire for and look forward to a life in which they are at peace and in harmony with themselves, with others, with the environment, and for those who believe in a transcendent supreme power with the creator or God or the supreme being or the highest object of worship, veneration, depending on how the absolute is perceived or defined in the religious philosophies or worldviews. In addition to peaceful and harmonious relationships, the most desirable state of existence that humans would be pleased with is one that provides safety, peace, security, and with all a sense of inner tranquility or well-being, of joy and happiness, of success or triumph, 
all of which should be of enduring positive impact on their lives. Such a perception um, of human life and well-being is in consonance with the concept of sejahtera in the Malay language. The word sejahtera, which um, uh, roughly translated into English as well-being or prosperity, is widely used in Malaysia and Indonesia as a fundamental concept of human existence, which is usually applied to various dimensions of life, physical, ecological, psychological, intellectual, emotional, economic, political, governance, educational, social, cultural, and religious. And, and this has been addressed many times by Tansri Zul when he talks of this, the 10 dimensions of sejahtera. Now, given its importance and central role in the building, nurturing, and sustaining of a humane, peaceful, balanced, and prosperous civilization, in this period of most of mankind are currently starving for kesejahteraan, struggling against an unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic. The Malay concept of sejahtera, in the present writer's humble opinion, should be reviewed and re-examined by Muslim scholars and intellectuals for the purpose of building an alternative paradigm of holistic and sustainable development from the worldview of Tawheed. This worldview, or the German word for it, Weltanschauung, in Arabic, al ruyah al kawniya al shamil al wujud or Al-Tasawwur Al-Kamil Al-Shamil, or Al-Nazar Il al haya is founded upon a deep faith and conviction in the absolute oneness, absolute sovereignty, and absolute authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, SWT from now on, which is an abbreviation for glorified and exalted be he, who is not just the creator of mankind, the world and the whole cosmos, but at one and the same time, the one and only object of worship for mankind and all creatures. Sorry, I don't have the mouse. Uh, for a long time, I didn't use a mouse, so I have a problem. I need a mouse now, um, the good mouse. <laughs> the only owner, the perpetual sustainer, the nourisher and manager of all the world, the all-wise provider of guidance for mankind, the absolute lawgiver, the most compassionate ruler, and the most judge, judge of mankind and the hereafter. And all these things are forgotten by COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, the eternal life for all mankind in paradise or in perdition after the resurrection and the final judgment. His final revelation to mankind, the Quran, which was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, S-A-W, meaning peace and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, the exemplar par excellence of the religion of complete submission to the will of Allah, <clears throat> to the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Al-Islam, contains the most comprehensive guide and the right way for human beings to follow, complemented by the prophetic uh, sunnah to obtain, to obtain uh, real goodness well-being, that is al-hasana in this world, and everlasting real goodness well-being, al-hasana in darul akhirah, uh, the hereafter. As ad Thank you very much, uh, brother, for, for bringing the mouse, the good mouse. As adherents of the religion of Islam, the Muslim intelligentsia, scholars, thinkers, and intellectuals who are most aware of, and that would include all of us, and most disturbed, and that will also include all of us, by the prolonged malaise of the ummah and the acute crisis of leadership in Muslim countries. And of course, Malaysia is experiencing this deep, acute, prolonged crisis uh, for no good reason, are expected to appreciate and internalize the importance and indispensability of this Tawhidic worldview as a general conceptual and philosophical frame of reference. We need that frame of reference. Otherwise, with the wrong frame of reference, we're going in the wrong direction. In understanding the Islamic concept of holistic and comprehensive well-being, success and happiness before they can impart, and they should impart, like Tansri Zul has been doing all over the world, before they can impart the correct knowledge of the concept to the Muslim privileged elites, 
decision makers, political leaders, professionals, administrators, academics, and students, as well as with fellow citizens of other faiths and religions. Our non-Muslim brothers and sisters need to know this as well. Muslims also owe a responsibility to share this important Islamic knowledge and vision uh, to the multi-religious and multi-ethnic society of Malaysia. Seeking to, under to understand an Islamic perspective of the popular Malay concept of sejahtera, although regrettably it is not possible to do justice in this brief introductory essay, brief but about 56 pages, is also premised upon the fact that many uh, traditional and indigenous Malay concepts had undergone a process of Islamicization. It's not difficult to say Islamicization. Why? <laughs> Islamization, right? It's so difficult. Uh, such as the words Tuhan, Islamicized to Allah, Sembahyang to Salah, Budi Pekerti to Adab and Akhla, Lebaran di Indonesia and Hari Raya di Malaysia to Idul Fitri or Idul Adha. Although the, the words Tuhan, Sembahyang, Budi Pekerti in the Malay uh, now have, sir? Yeah. Uh, have um, the Islamic meaning to it, and that, that we should not forget that. Um, in the same way, the term sejahtera has acquired a new value added and Islamicized meaning, namely uh, a state of holistic well-being, success and happiness in this world and in the hereafter. So that in the hereafter is, is very much uh, Islamic content. Given the fact that the belief and conviction in the future existence of mankind after death and after the day of resurrection is the second highest conviction or belief in the uh, religion of Islam. That is why the Quran always says, Al Iman wal Amal Saleh. Iman and Amal Saleh. Um, and, and Iman there is Iman in Allah and Al Akhirah as the most important uh, beliefs. Um, the only, the, okay. Uh, they, that is, including the Muslims, have been commanded, we have been ordered, and if you, you, uh, we attend Friday prayers, and at the end, the Imam will say, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. Inna Allah, indeed Allah commands, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan, commands that we do, uh, we do what that is um, uh, ma'roof, and, and prohibit that which is munkar. So it's a common. Adil, adil. Al-adil wal ihsan, sorry. Uh, just and 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 ihsan. Inna Allah yamur bil adli wal ihsan wa itai dil qurba wa yanhan il fasha wal munkar wal bagh yaidukum la alakum tadakarun ila akhir il ayah. So it's a commandment um, by Allah uh, for us to do justice uh, and to make everlasting happiness in the hereafter as the ultimate destination of the human life, not by belittling or neglecting, or worse still, abandoning the leadership and civilizational roles that are meant to be carried out by the Ummah, which is a universal Islamic uh, community, but by making the best use of this necessary, beneficial, but brief earthly existence, with all its abundant God-given bounties. We've been reminded in the Quran again and again of the, of the um, of, the, of these bounties of Allah, the na'mah of Allah uh, in the Qur'an, which uh, Ar-Rahman uh, uses the word ala. فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبًا Which of the bounties of your Lord would you deny? And that's repeated 37 times, I think, in Ar-Rahman. Uh, for the purpose of achieving sound growth and goodness in this transient world of al-hayat al-dunya, in doing so, all our deeds become ibadah. With regard to the subject of Islamization of Malay concepts, it is interesting to, to reflect at this juncture that just as the Malay word for the world, bumi, uh, from, which is from the Sanskrit bumi, and the Malay word shurga from Sanskrit suarga or shuarga, have also acquired Islamicized meanings in consonance with the above mentioned worldview. Similarly, uh, the use of the term sejahtera or kajatraan in the original draft formulations of the Falsafa Pandidika Nagara, 
Of course, in 1996, they changed it to Falsafah Pendidikan Kebangsaan. was understood from the perspective of the worldview of Islam, not from the pre-Islamic, secular, or polytheistic perspectives. It is useful for the present-day students, and I hope students will follow this also, uh, and the Malaysian younger generation, if the present writer, if I were to recall, sorry, uh, the exciting historical background and a really exciting at that time, an experience in Malaysian politics of the late 1980s, when some Malay Muslim academics of UKM, IIUM, including the present writer, IAB and ABIM, were approached separately by the Ministry of Education at that time, uh, under the leadership of Tansi Wan Zahid, at that time Datuk Wan Zahid, Dr. Wan Zahid, to contribute to drafting of the first Fasafah Pandidika Nagara in 1988. As Muslim academics and activists, they were most conscious of the Islamic meanings of Malay terminologies when they consented to the use of the words kesejahteraan diri, kepercayaan dan kepatuhan kepada Tuhan, uh, without any reference to Islam in the Falsafah text. Bearing in mind that since the Falsafah was meant for the whole multi-religious citizens and nation of Malaysia, they did not insist nor wanted to impose unilaterally the Islamic interpretation of the words insan yang seimbang dan harmonis, rohani dan kepercayaan dan kepatuhan kepada Tuhan, sejahtera and others. This was the compromise they were willing to concede in good faith, despite the fact that the Minister of Education at that time, uh, YB Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim, was well known as a prominent young Islamist, Malay uh, politician, and former Islamic youth leader, while new government policies or initiatives then had to be in line with the policy of Penerapan Nilai Nilai Islam, which was introduced by Dr. Mahathir when he became the Prime Minister in 1981, and then co-opted at that time, known as Saudara Anna Ibrahim in 1982, to become his political partner, supporter, and Islamic protagonist. Now, all that is history. Uh, we are seeing a completely different scenario. That's in the footnote. Lah. Uh, now, as a small footnote, this historical event in the Malaysia of resurgent Islam, writers, Western writers talk at that time of, of the resurgence of Islam in the 70s, including uh, Zaina Anwar, uh, the leader of, 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 of Sisters in Islam. Sisters in Islam, okay. Uh, uh, this event reminds the present writer of the great political compromise, also made in good faith uh, in the, the newly born Republic of Indonesia, uh, and I followed this quite closely, that leaders of Mashumi, and I knew them, uh, especially Pak, Pak Natsir and Pak Prawoto Mangkusasmito, Pak Sukiman Wirio Sanjoyo, considered in the early 1950s in the final formulation of Pancasila. Now, Malaysian students and Indonesians need to know this, that there was this always a compromise of Muslims for the sake of, of the minority, not for the sake of the majority. The official ideology, the first pillar of, of Pancasila, Ketuhanan Yang Maha Esa, uh, was the compromise considered by the Islamic political party leaders to accommodate the stand of the minority Christian leaders. At that time, Christians were about maybe not more than 5%. Although Muslims were the overwhelming majority, constituting about 90% of the population at that time, uh, but the Christian leaders opposed the idea of Nagara Islam, so, so the uh, Mashumi had to abandon Nagara Islam concept, or to the Islamic monotheistic notion of God as advocated by Mashumi. And you can see this in this excellent book of Boland, The Struggle of Islam in Modern Indonesia. By the way, Boland was also part of the Christian church at that time. But he gave a very good objective study of, of uh, the history. And bearing in mind, I think this is the, the more significant thing for the present, 
bearing in mind that Islam has the largest number of adherents in Southeast Asia, that Muslim culture is a dominant culture of the region, and that Muslim communities throughout the region prefer a life of salamat dan sejahtera for the present as well as for the future generations, Muslim Southeast Asia, in our humble opinion, could represent in the near future a good model of the sejahtera paradigm of wholesome and holistic human and national development, which is inclusive of peaceful inter-religious coexistence and the Malaysian vision of shared prosperity in the context of plurality of cultures, religions, and political systems in ASEAN. I think we in ASEAN should work for this. With regard to the intellectual discourse on Sajatra in Malays contemporary Malaysian context, no one, to the best of my knowledge, has been as active, as persistent, as innovative, and as prolific, and maybe Tuan Sri might add, as stubborn, <laughs> both locally and internationally, in advocating and propagating the importance of the value and uh, virtue of Sajatra in education, sustainable development goals, restructuring of roles of universities, higher education, and nation, and he never tired of talking about all this. Then, Tansri Professor Emeritus, Dr. Zulkifli Abdul Razak, uh, the rector of IIUM. Uh, so I hope Tansri will continue to take rest uh, for another three months. Tansri will do your job. <laughs> it is noteworthy that this Mahaguru of Sajatra launched his intellectual and educational jihad, a word which he never used, I think, because he would, he's afraid he might be seen as a terrorist. But the word jihad means striving uh, in the best possible manner. Uh, during his leadership of USM as its fifth vice chancellor, then as president of Asahil, then as president of, um, of, uh, of, of Universitas 21, and um, uh, International Association of Universities, I, IAU. He was awarded the Gilbert uh, Medal, the highest honor bestowed by Universitas 21 in recognition of his long-term commitment to an integrated approach to internationalization to a sustainable sejahtera, and that's part of the text, approach to international higher education. And his tireless work to support and develop the clearly good uh, public good dimension of higher education, as well as his being distinctive in his willingness to challenge Western knowledge systems. This is part of Islamicization of human knowledge that we in IIU have been doing, uh, challenging uh, the dominant paradigm, which is, which is not in line with the Tawhidic paradigm. What is in line, we don't have any problem. We benefit a lot from Western knowledge or Eastern knowledge, which is in, in conformity, not against the Islamic values. Okay, now, uh, okay. Prof. Zul explains his, uh, this historical background of Sajatra uh, as follows. Um, it, it was in USM um, as, uh, uh, as part of the impetus to ignite transformational mindset changes of, of his students and his staff. Then I come to the linguistic definition and connotations of Sajatra in the Malay language by using Kamus Dewan, Aman dan Ma'mur, Senang dan Tentram, Terpelihara daripada Bencana. Menjadi kesejahtera berarti mengamankan, menyelamatkan. And Kamus Besar Bahasa Indonesia defines Sajatra more or less in the same way, Aman, Sentosa dan Ma'mur. Selamat terlepas dari segala macam gangguan dan kesejahteraan, hal atau keadaan sejahtera, keamanan, keselamatan, ketentraman. According to one uh, Indonesian writer, um, Agustina, sejahtera, in my opinion, is a process of social existence which is safe, tranquil, peaceful, just, and prosperous. Okay. And then, now, we, we do not use this in Malaysia, but Indonesia has been using this. Negara kesejahteraan, because they came up with the idea of a welfare state. So, negara kesejahteraan, the welfare state theory, uh, 
is in harmony with the basic policy of the Indonesian state, which talks of kesejahteraan, the rule of law, human rights, social justice, and absence of discrimination. Uh, not discrimination. Now, I come to the elaboration of the meaning uh, and connotation of Jatra by Tansri Professor Emeritus Dr. Zul. Prof. Zul elucidates the comprehensive scope and force of the social implications of the concept of Jatra uh, when it is uh, understood uh, in the context of the 10 intertwined dimensions of which he has made into acronym of SPICES, uh, spiritual, physical, intellectual, cultural, cognitive, emotional, ecological, environmental, and so on. And he also explained uh, that Sajatra in the Malay language is not easily rendered into other languages because it is comprehensive in meaning, it's multi-layered, uh, and so it has several nuances. Uh, it is human-centric, uh, but it is, it is in fact beyond prosperity and well-being. It is human-centric in that it spans the macrocosmic and microcosmic nexus. Uh, this is something actually uh, metaphysically quite deep, because from the uh, spiritual Islamic tradition, uh, the man is supposed to be... Uh, 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 um, a microcosm which has the macrocosm in him. So we have the whole universe within us. And that, that's going into another area, so that uh, requires another lecture. Invite me for that. Um, okay. Uh, then he explained um, that it was, okay, blah, blah, blah. And this idea of humanizing education, because Tansri Zul has been in the forefront in Malaysia, along with other intellectuals in UNESCO, uh, in, 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 in promoting this vision of humanizing education. And we're doing that in IIUM now, and for Insan Sejahtera. In promoting and championing the concept of Sejahtera, Prof. Zul frequently and passionately invokes the important historic document, um, which he says to give to be given a new lease of life, uh, called the FPK, Falsafa Pendidikan Kebangsaan, first formulated in 1988 and then slightly modified in 1996. So he says the FPK clearly promotes the values of balanced Seimbang and harmonious, harmonious uh, as an outcome of education that is insan sejahtera. And this concept is also being propagated in USIM and now in Malaysia, uh, sorry, in, in IIUM. And these are emerging concepts that have begun to find their way in UNESCO uh, with the ESD program. Now, this is a very important paper, that, uh, a chapter in a book, uh, which I think uh, our academic staff and certainly the centers will have to, to read. Decolonizing, he wrote this chapter, Decolonizing the Paradigm of, of um, Sustainable Development, of, uh, should not be there, it's my mistake, through the traditional concepts Jatra. Decolonizing is another dimension of Islamization of human knowledge, except that we did not really talk much about it in, in, in our university, but decolonization of the human mind, which, uh, which the late Prof. Uh, Sayyid Hussein al -Attas talked about, uh, is, is part of, of the mission of Islamization of human knowledge. So in this book, uh, Tansri Zul refers to the uh, Sanskrit etymology of the Malay language and says that today Sajatra is more often associated with the idea of balance, well-being and coexistence with common shared values. But 
its essential meaning is beyond well-being of individuals ah institutions organizations and society he explains how this work the sons from the sanskrit sadhya sudatra and so chitra and but he says regardless of the etymology of the word the very core of the sujatra concept uh, as understood in in malaysian in malay uh, society in malay maritime at that time or you might say um, delta based um, malay society kingdoms uh, <clears throat> were also used uh, in the uh, uh, in, in building up the uh, the governmental structure of of malay kingdom so sujatra was also part of that uh, historical sociological development of of malay society um then he says that taken together the status of jatra can be described as a balanced lifestyle summarized by at least 10 different elements which i mentioned earlier the spices you can read this in this book um very good book edited by uh, fadiva galkute and choka uh, Prof. Zul reiterates the importance of the harmonious and integrated relationship of the ten dimensions of Sujatra, uh, which would include collaborative relationship, in particular uh, embraces compassion, um, um, empathy. Uh, these are spiritual values of Islam and the uncompromising spirit of oneness um, which is also and plus also um, uh, the the threat of global warming and the you might say now the the emergency of climate change the global emergency the unprecedented occurrence of crisis upon after crisis and uh, now of course we can add COVID-19 crisis cannot be handled effectively without nurturing the relationship that binds people via a set of common values and ethics. Now, thanks to his, this is what I want to say finally, but what uh, Tansi Zul has been doing, thanks to the persistence, dedication, and smart advocacy efforts of Prof Zul and his remarkable achievements in getting USM uh, uh, to become an Apex University and also RCE um, to implement uh, ESD, uh, the concept of Jatra became a transnational Asia Pacific concept. Um, for this, Tansui Zul should get a, a title, um, what, um, Panglima Bahasa or something? Panglima uh, Munchi, Antarabangsa, because it has gone to 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 uh, to Korea, at least, uh, and also maybe some African countries by now. Hopefully in Brazil also, after they get over the crisis, uh, the concept of Sujatra became a transnational Asia Pacific concept when South Korea started the Sujatra project before us in 2011 which comprised of an eco park and the Sajatra Center. I don't know how they would say Sajatra. The, the Japanese cannot say R, ah, isn't it? Or oh, the Chinese, oh, Sajatala, Sajatala. The, the Koreans, boleh kah sebut Sajatra? I, I don't know, huh? Tak tahulah. Anyway, but they, they wrote it correctly. Pronouncing would be a bit difficult for the Japanese with Sajatala or the Chinese. Uh, Networking Committee and Sajatra Fellowship Program of the Asia Pacific RCEs. This has transformed the concept of Sajatra from a Malay word into a universal terminology. Alhamdulillah, and thanks to Tansri for that. Naturally, Prof. Zhu was overjoyed when the Sajatra Center and the Sajatra Forest were officially opened in Tongyong 
uh, in South Korea in 2015. And he said, uh, it came out in this uh, newspaper also, I think, in NST, nothing is more satisfying than an idea that is translated into reality, especially a rather abstract one, uh, as a form of social innovation. Uh, we are again grateful to, to Tansri Zul for achieving uh, amidst the corona control movement order, I don't know how he escaped this control movement, uh, another fee feather in the cap of IAUM or in the song cop of IAUM, namely the official recognition by UNESCO of its being a new RCE for greater Gombak area. Alhamdulillah. Now, uh, on, on the Sajatra forest, this is what Tan Sri Zul says, but for time sake, I will have to skip that. And in leading and championing Sajatra discourse in Malaysia, Prof. Zul initiated the Sajatra Leadership Initiative in USIM to address the ESD uh, issue. And then also uh, he advocated the formation of SLIs, Sajatra Leadership uh, initiatives in African countries during his African visits. And then uh, he established the Sajatra uh, Center in IIUM for Sustainability and uh, uh, Humanity, headed by uh, the, the chairman is here, Dr. Zainal, <laughs> um, uh, to promote the mission of humanizing education through Maqasid al Sharia and sustainable development. Um, so he is right into the Sharia. His inclusion of the Maqasid as Sharia principles in the Sajatra concept has no doubt reinforced the Islamic interpretation and legitimacy of the concept. With regard to the socioeconomic aspect of national well being, Tansri Zhu corrected the misconceptions of some people, including a minister at that time, on Mamastikan Kajatra and Rakyat, which was confined only to the socioeconomic well being. From his perspective, the term socioeconomic well-being limits the scope of the meaning of quality of life, uh, which is invariably a spiritual being. A man as a spiritual being has been emphasized by Tansri in many of his discourses. Then the formation of Sajatra Education Advocates, which is, again, a very important um, forum for Muslims and non-Muslim scholars to get together. While emphasizing the importance of actualizing the values of Insan Sajatra, Sajatra man, which stem from his or her spiritual essence and identity with the Qalb, and Tansi Zul, since I think uh, being with, uh, associated with Akhep and also with Usim, the Qalb-driven uh, leadership became a very important uh, point in his talks. <clears throat> so Tan Sri Zul uh, in, in IIUM incorporates the IIUM vision and mission of triple I's. Um, of course, he gives a current um, contemporary um, interpretation to that, which is very good. Uh, Prof. Zul continues to remind his audience of the centrality of the spiritual core of man in the domains of higher education educational leadership and sustainable development. And this is where our, um, our mosque, our masjid, has been playing a key role under the leadership of uh, Prof. Uh, Akmal. Uh, by topping up the discourse late last year, and he was here, I think he was sitting somewhere here, um, the, the, this discourse of uh, Sjatra with the concept of Rahmatan al alamin uh, a move which I appreciated and applauded, uh, wrong spelling, applauds, uh, because for, a long, for too long that um, divinely ordained prophetic mission has been neglected uh, in the national development of Malaysia. And just because we have a different change of government, that does not mean Quranic concept will have to follow, will have to play uh, also the political game. Rahmatan al-Alamin must stay forever 
irrespective of who is in the government, even non-Muslim governments, um, has been neglected. Okay, and um, and Zul is, in fact, to my mind, this is my interpretation, is putting across the RIUM platform a new civilizational grand narrative. And that word grand narrative is, uh, is disliked, uh, deconstructed by all the postmodernists. And to them, there's no more grand narrative. But we need the grand narratives. Uh, and the grand narrative from the Quran must be projected defended, spread out, and also given to the postmodernists. To orient, to reorient the mindset of those Muslim elites in Malaysia and other Muslim countries who are stuck, as it were, in the quagmire of global systemic turmoil, of corruption, of political international hypocrisy, of mass delusions come deceptions. The reorientation, re-education, and intellectual reform of Muslim elites, leaders, policymakers, and most importantly, uh, politicians are necessary for the Ummah to switch to a new trajectory of blessed, holistic, and integral growth, which is designed and programmed to achieve goodness and well-being in this world, hasana fid dunya, and attain by the grace of Allah, divine pleasure, ridwan Allah, and true happiness, as saada in the hereafter, with hasana fil akhirah. I come now to uh, part four. I have uh, uh, eight parts, so uh, another four parts to go. <laughs> it is an introduction. <laughs> This is another deception from Kamal. <laughs> okay. I will be, I try to be very fast, inshallah, yeah? uh, Prof. Uh, Faris. Yeah? So please wake up. Uh, now, now we come to the, the Quran. Taking into consideration first the lexical definition of Sijatra, um, and then the, uh, then also the article intellectual articulation and reconceptualization in Prof. Zul's discourse on Sajatra. Um, the, the present writer uh, did a brief survey of the Quranic scripture and worldview in search of the Islamic concept which uh, corresponds uh, most adequately to the Islamicized uh, which is better? Should I use paper or just uh, kayu or to get this mouse? Maybe the mouse is hungry. Huh? Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You need an engineer always to help. Uh, the present writer did a brief survey in search of the Islamic concept, which corresponds most adequately to the Islamicized Malay concept of Jatra. We identified the concept of falah, an Arabic terminology with wide connotations, just like the concept of sjatra in Malay, as the most appropriate conceptual equivalent of the post-Islamicized conception of sjatra. It is proper and timely, in our view, to revisit the concept of al-falah. After having written a small essay on it in 1990, I wrote this, Nilai Nilai Universal Islam, Tentang Kesjahteraan, in which I highlighted the importance of Al-Falah uh, and its antithesis, Al-Khusran. And it was printed by the Ministry of Higher Education. Of course, it's out of print. In the Quran, the word Muflihun, those endowed with Al-Falah, connotes one at the same time those who will attain prosperity, those who will be truly successful, those who will attain happiness, and this, is, this overlaps with the meanings of Sijatra. Uh, and those who will achieve the supreme triumph. Of course, this is not in Sijatra, because this supreme triumph, Al-Fawzul Azim, is only in the hereafter, not in this world. Allah uses Al-Fawz only in the hereafter, that is, in the end. 
It is stated in the Lisan al-Arab, which is the most authoritative dictionary of Arabic language, that al-Falah means success, salvation, and permanence of an naim I put that uh, happiness, tranquility, comfort, peace, all in one. Uh, because no one word can, can translate, just like sjatra, no one word can, can do justice to its full meaning. And al-khair. It is said that the people of al-Jannah are called muflihun because of their joyful achievement of permanence, of uh, permanence here, of eternal baqa, um, baqa of something, um, uh, of happiness, of time, I think falahu dar. Um, okay, this is from taken from Muqawimat al falah fil Quran al Karim, a very very good uh, study by an uh, um, Azhari scholar. Uh, then, uh, of course, the another reason is the fact that the adhan calls us to both happiness in this world and in hereafter. There's no other word in the Arabic language uh, than fala, which conveys this idea of hasana fid dunya and hasan fil akhirah. And so uh, the, um, the adhan was formulated um, and of course inspired by God, because this is a permanent call um, that hayya ala al-fala, which is translated by by many Arabic scholars, haluma ala baqa il khair, hasten to that which shall bring you permanence of goodness and well-being through as salah. Then uh, the meanings of aflaha, al fala, al muflihun, and here I'm taking mainly from, uh, from from Ibn Manzur and also from Lane's lexicon, which is the most authoritative dictionary of Arabic language uh, in the non non-Arabic language. Al-Fawz bima yugtabatu bihi wa fihi salah wa fihi salah al-hal. Also, al-Fawz wa al-Najah wa al-Baqa fi al-Na'im wa al-Khair. This is from Ibn Manzur. Also, okay, then al-Raghib al-Isfahani in his al-Mufradat fi gharib al-Quran says, al-Falah is of two kinds, dunyawi and ukhrawi. As for dunya, it refers to the attainment of happy state, which uh, worldly life makes it pleasant, survival, fame, uh, fame, and so on. And ukhrawi al-falah, while the ukhrawi al-falah constitutes conditions such as permanence without annihilation, wealth without poverty, fame without ignominy, knowledge without ignorance. And then uh, Sheikh Dr. Ali al-Qaradari who is the um, secretary of the International uh, Union of Muslim Scholars, uh, explains al-Falah as having a number of aspects and dimensions. It embraces all the constituents of man and life because it is a comprehensive concept of spiritual, psychological, and physiological happiness. as saada al-ruhiyya, as saada al-zahiriyya, as saada Okay, I cannot remember the Arabic text now. It could also be, he says, um, be seen as a concept of of um, of al quwa al maddiya wa al ma'nawiya. That is uh, ma material and moral strengths uh, covering the azahir and batin and so on. Uh, as for al falah as understood in worldly systems, it says it is confined only to the outer, the zahir aspect of life, without the inner without the, the, the batin aspect, to the body and uh, sensual enjoyments, without the spiritual. Therefore, al-falah in worldly perspective is just external happiness, a saada uh, al zahiriya uh, happiness of wealth, saada tul mal happiness of sex, uh, saada tul uh, al-jins, uh, Another reason for the choice of al-falah is the fact that, uh, I, mentioned, I mentioned this just now, is that uh, the Arabic lexicographers say that there's no other single, no other single word in the Arabic other than al-falah which signifies goodness in this world and goodness in the hereafter and salvation from the torment of the fire. 
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار Okay, uh, so right now I come to okay another another meaning of aflaha. Uh, the noun alfala means all this prosperity, blah blah blah, all that. The term al muflihun uh, refers to all this, and and then uh, the word al al muflihun. Uh, Uh, it is being used in the Quran with the expression "Qad aflaha," like in Surah Al-Mu'minun. "Qad aflaha al-Mu'minun, al-ladhi nahum fi salatim khashiyun ila akhir al-ayah." Such as number one in in that ayah in that Surah Al-Mu'minun, from from one to eight, um, Allah refers to people who practice. Uh, no, sorry, this is this is another one. Okay, it's here. Those who have khushu, الذي نهم في صلاتهم خاشعون. Those who have khushu in their prayers. والذي نهم عن اللغو مؤرضون. They avoid indulgence and frivolities and 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 vanities. والذي نهم للزكاة فاعلون. They are constant in the acts of self-purification. Um, then also والذي نهم لفروجهم حافظون. Uh, they guard and preserve their modesty and sexual integrity. Uh, they fulfill all their trust faithfully and their pledges and so on. And they strictly guard their... Uh, now, believers with the above qualities and characteristics are promised uh, al-jannah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a reward for their righteous conduct and good deeds. And um, the other means, uh, there are many means of attaining falah, just as there are 10 means of attaining sujatra uh, in Tansri Zul's discourse or narrative. Um, one is by doing da'wah bil khair. Second is by Al-jihad fi sabilillah bi amwalihim wa anfusihim, striving with one's wealth and saves uh, and selves for the sake of Allah, and um, making sure that uh, on the day of judgment, the on the balance of deeds on this mizanul uh, amal, uh, the the it is uh, you know the weight of of good deeds outweigh that of bad deeds, and then. Um, the ability to conquer your selfishness, uh, the covetousness of the self by preferring others. This is ithar. Uh, and then uh, obeying Allah and the Prophet in upholding the sharia positively. Um, being considered as belonging to the partisans of Allah, Hezbollah, not party of Allah. Because Allah doesn't like political parties. <laughs> but partisans of Allah. <laughs> the word used is Hezbollah. But Hezb in the, in the, in the pre-modern period is different from the post-modern period. Post-modern period is a lot of chaos and headaches and crisis. But in the post-modern period, uh, it is it's something good. Um, it can also be bad if it is Hezbo Shaitan. Um, okay. Uh, then in a room also uh, helping needing uh, needy relatives and others. And okay. Then Allah says, La Allahum tuflihun. Maybe you will have the chance to get al fala. How? By not practicing riba. Uh, by Having sabr and 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 fasbiru wa uh, rabitu uh, constancy by always fearing the displeasure of Allah by abstaining from intoxicants, games of chance, and loathsome allurements of Satan. I think our for intoxicants, those with drug problems, we need to take note of this, uh, including our students. And to be always cautious and mindful of the displeasures of Allah so as to be able to resist bad things 
even if they appear to be enticing, especially for the Ulul Albab. Okay. And repentance. And after you pray Jum'ah, get out of the mosque. Okay? And look for uh, the bounties of Allah uh, through economic, financial, entrepreneurial, business, what have you, as long as they're halal and for good purpose. So Allah wants you, um, when, the, when the ferry is finished, فَانْتَصِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ Okay. All right. Um, then Allah also, Allah, mashaAllah, He makes everything so clear. لَا يُفْلِهُ You are not, these people are not going to get falah. And who are they? The zalimun. And there are many types of zul. The mujrimun. Many types of jirim. The sahirun. And not a big problem for us. But during the time of Musa alayhi salam was a big problem because uh, Fir'aun used magicians to support him. Today we use, who do we use to support us? Huh? Businessmen. Huh? Uh, Al-Kafirun also. And then also, Al-Ladheena yaftaroon ala Allah al These are the people who attribute their own inventions and Falsehoods to Allah. This refers basically to the Ahlul Kitab who used to change, modify the words of Allah and then say this is from Allah. Okay? Because modern people don't do this, but modern people come up with what they say is, is supposed to be uh, worshipped. And that's even worse. Now we come to the highest goal in life beyond falah is ibtira ridwan Allah or Mardatillah or Ridallah. Um, okay. The scholars of Islam are conscious that among those blessings or favors reserved for the believers, the greatest blessing for them in this world and in the hereafter is to be the fortunate, the lucky, the blessed recipients of Allah's Ridwan. Rida, Ridwan, Mardatillah. After striving sincerely and wholeheartedly in the cause of Allah, fi sabilillahi bi amwalihim wa anfusihim. This realization has led several contemporary scholars to first affirm al falah as a primary goal of, of, of uh, personal and societal uh, reconstruction without forgetting that seeking the pleasure, approval, and goodly acceptance of Allah, ibtira mardatillah, or ibtira ridwa nillah, or ibtira ridallah, should accompany all Muslims' efforts of striving for happiness, prosperity, well-being, welfare, all kinds of sajatra or sustainable development. So this is the additional spiritual condition. Because when you get the, uh, the Ridwan of Allah, then you get all the best in it. Uh, of course, we should not um, entertain uh, getting his wrath. That is why in Ramadan, remember, the most popular dua in Ramadan that we're being taught Allahumma inna na'udhu bika minal uh, Allahumma inna na'udhu bika minal uh, uh, Also dua during this uh, during the uh, turunnya apa ni, malam Lailatul Qadar Allahumma inna uh, Allahumma inna nas, Allahumma inna nas'aluka rida uh, nas'aluka ridaka so sakhat is the displeasure of Allah. You know? So we want to get Allah ma'ina nas'aluka ridaka wal jannah ridaka your ridwan and al jannah and then na'udhu bika min sakhatika your wrath, your displeasure. Okay? 
and Annar. So uh, Allah is, is there uh, for all of us. But for, for the rest of the secular, atheistic, agnostic world, materialistic world, uh, there's no Allah. And, and this pandemic, uh, I think, is, is a wake-up call that there is a higher being, and not just creator, but sustainer. Okay, then this, uh, this Ridwan uh, value is important because it has to do with the niyyah. So everything is based upon niyyah in Islam. إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ So if the niyyah is wrong, even if the things are good, it doesn't count with Allah. So niyyah must be based on seeking the pleasure of Allah. Not, as Tansri said in his speeches, not in order to be renewed as rector, not in order to become Tansri or whatever. He said this. Of course, he is being renewed, alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, Tansri, take a good rest. You have been renewed already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's not aware. Tansi, Puan Siri kena tahu lah. I never had any problem with that from the very beginning. That's why I told him, I told Zul, Tansi Zul, I said Zul, you can't do all this in two years. When he came, I want to do this, not but to no one. Zul, you cannot do this in two years. You need ten years. Tapa lah he. He gets another five years. Mungkin sambung, sambung lagi lah. Bagus juga orang politik ni menteri-menteri ni kan? They should know how to distinguish between mana antah mana beras. Okay, the okay. This has to do with niyah. Very important niyah. After that, it is amal, and then. Wasail, the means, the asbab. In Arabic, it's called asbab. Asbab. Asbab bukan sebab-sebab, tapi the means, cara untuk sampai kepada matlamat itu. That is berkaitan dengan 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 ridwan Allah. Also, uh, and then dengan hadaf, tujuan, gharad, the 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 goal, objective. Di redal titik redal Allah. We have to ask. This, all these three questions. Niat di mana? Niat untuk apa? Uh, wasilah atau asbab itu bagaimana? Dan ke mana hendak dituju? The Islamic principle of pursuing what constitutes al-maslah uh, as opposed to mafsadah, uh, ma'haram, makroh, all within the framework of maqasid al-shari'ah is also to be involved. And alhamdulillah, Tansri when he brought in the idea of maqasid al-shari'ah. Maybe this is from, from Usim juga, maqasid al-shari'ah. Then, then you have to deal with maslaha, mafsada, haram, makro, halal, and all that. Al-khair, al-shar. So it has to be involved in all developmental, reformational, reconstructional, or civilizational efforts. And Tansri Zul is um, involved in all these efforts. This Islamic normative approach, which is entirely different from the secular, agnostic, or atheistic approaches, is part and parcel of the implementation of the ummatic mission of al-amru bil ma'ruf wa nahyu anil munkar, doing all that which is halal, prohibiting that which is munkar and haram, and seeking the ridwan Allah. And these are some of the verses of the Quran which contain the phrase um, Ridwan Allah. Uh, um, okay. Al-Baqarah, Al-Mujadila, Al-Tawbah, Al-Baqarah, Al-Tawbah. Okay. Now, we need to mention at this point that the blessings of Al-Falah and Ridwan of Allah uh, are conferred by the all-wise sustainer of the cosmos um, only upon those who are considered to be al-mu'minun. So 
this indicates that through faith, uh, Iman is the single fundamental prerequisite for the attainment of the two most. Kalau tak ada Iman, sorry. Uh, ataupun Iman yang 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 sesat. Iman yang uh, tidak sesuai dengan fit, dengan Tawheed. Pun tak boleh lah. So, you cannot get sejahtera without that. From the Islamic perspective. But sejahtera could also be seen from the non-Islamic perspective. And I suppose the Koreans are looking at it from the non-Islamic perspective. Um, otherwise, they will say, Tan Sri Zul, you want to Islamize us, ka? <laughs> Okay, so uh, this fundamental spiritual quality uh, in the paradigm of Tawheed must be complemented by Amal Saleh. Or what the Quran says, Al Baqiyatu Salihat. That is the righteous works of enduring value. Enduring, very important. Or um, with Makarimul Akhlaq and Husnul Khuluq. Da'wah ilal Khair, al Okay, now. We come to number six. Ada nak abira ni? Boleh bangun lah. Siap makanan. Now, the values of taqwa, ihsan, and hubbullah, ni tambah lagi. Rupanya kena tambah lagi. Tapi dah ada dah. In addition to the two fundamental values of iman and amal salih, remember? Wal asri inna al-insana la fi khus illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat. Iman and amal salih. But in iman, dah ada, dah concept taqwa, ihsan, and all that. It is embedded in that. But the Quran highlights it. So we need to highlight so that uh, those who do not know the Quran will know that uh, it's not just mere iman. Yeah? It's not just mere amal saleh. There's a deep meaning of iman and deep meaning of amal saleh there. And, and that refers to taqwa, ihsan, and hubbullah. Hubbullah. Cinta kepada Allah. This uh, concept cinta jarang ditekankan. Except by young people, but that is for uh, for selfish purposes, lah. not for spiritual purposes, cinta and all that. But cinta is 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 uh, the most uh, profound uh, attribute of the believer. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ Those who have iman in Allah have the greatest love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, susah juga kita tu. Are we there yet? But there are stages lah kan. To reach the highest, the Prophet boleh lah. Kita yang bawah-bawah, duduk bawah-bawah, tak apalah. As long we are upon the ladder and not against the ladder. These um, three spiritual ethical values are actually the higher and finer degrees of Iman al So um, with that, then we, we need to avoid the the sakhat of Allah or the ghadab of Allah. Okay. Now, just to, just to stress the importance of taqwa, why is it that every Friday prayer, the condition of taqwa must be there in almost all madhahibs? In a shafi'i, mesti ada. Ittaqillah ke macam-macam mana, mesti ada. So you begin, Ya Yuhal Ladina Amanu Takullah Haqqa Tuqati Wa La Tamutunna Illa Wa Antu Muslimun Dan macam-macam lagi kan? Ya, apa ni? Ya Yuhal Nas Usikum Bi Taqwa Allah Macam-macam. Why Taqwa? It's so essential. But it is, it is, it has also immediate rewards. And that is why kedai-kedai mama ada taruh ayat-ayat ni. Ayat seribu dinar ni. Kedai mama. Bukan dia ingat Tuhan sangat. Dia nakkan duit dina tu masuk. Ha. Please don't tell me to kedai mama. Otherwise, they'll ban me. Because I like chapati and uh, and and tause, you know, <laughs> for breakfast. Tapi di belakang kedai ada lah ayat, ayat seribu dina tu kan. Ha. Jadi, what you follow this in, in surah At-Talaq. Surah At-Talaq. It says, uh, Allah will... If you... وَمَنْ يَتَّقِلَّهُ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ سُوَنْسُ مَخْرَجًا 
وَمَا يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ يُسْرَى Make things easy. وَمَا يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ يُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِ وَيُعْظِمْ أَجْرَهُ Will erase the evil deeds and magnify the rewards. Maha hebat. Patutlah pasang dinding. And will save you from calamities on earth. This is among the immediate rewards. The immediate consequences. Tapi dengan syarat, betul-betul lah. Kan? Uh, bukan for the dinar. Okay. And the scholars. Uh, ini termasuk kita lah. We come into this. Okay. Expect the scholars. The ulama. And uh, we are all ulama. Those who specialize in religious knowledge, knowledge are ulama. Those who specialize in worldly knowledge also are ulama. Uh, based on iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah says in the Quran, you remember very well at the end of that, um, that, apa ni, uh, that uh, surah Fatir, 35, ayat 28, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء So, ulama ni yang kata tuk lebay di masjid aja, UIA academics, Uh, ulama kan what about administrators uh, tak masuk ulama lah uh, tapi dia masuk bab lain lah urul albab uh, dia lagi tinggi urul albab <laughs> ulul amri dia lagi tinggi atiullah atiur rasul wa ulul amri minkum ha jadi ya uh, administrator lagi tinggi daripada ulama ha <laughs> Uh, ulul albab dan ulul amri dan taat pada Allah taat pada Rasul taat kepada pemegang-pegang kuasa di kalangan kamu hmm. masuklah hmm. Uh, okay uh, yeah, okay then we have all that now true scholars after all kalau kita masih tak ingat the prophet reminds us in a very long hadith Inna al-ulama warathatul anbiya. Ejaan di sini salah ya. Warathatul anbiya. Transliteration needs to be corrected. Inna al-ulama sesungguhnya scholars are the inheritors of the anbiya. Tinggi itu. And this is a sahih hadith. Then the ihsan. Ihsan also, you know the, the, the famous hadith Jibreel, kan? Islam, Iman, Ihsan. Okay, so that is part and parcel of Islam. You must have the three. You must have Islam, Iman, Ihsan to be a Muslim. And lepas tu yang lain-lain tu, uh, bonus lah, extra. Okay, so but Ihsan is, is mentioned there. And Adal and Ihsan. Uh, Adal comes first. That we have to do because according to the just. Ihsan is go, going beyond what is just. Going beyond what is uh, required by law. But to this way, we give Ihsan to our parents. But by law, mungkin you just need to send a, a check every month. Kan? Uh, take well, hospitals. But Ihsan, going beyond that. After obeying Allah and obeying the Prophet, then... Um, you give ihsan to your parents. So, hubbullah uh, is very, very important. And we cannot forget this. We must emphasize this. Because with hubbullah, we can carry out rahmatan al-alami. Uh, the mission rahmatan al-alami, we can carry it out. Be with hubbullah. Hubbul insan also. Loving the uh, hubbul khalq, uh, the, the, the creatures of Allah. Okay, because they have they are creatures of the same Allah. They have the fitrah. So we have to love them as well. Does not mean we have to ignore the bad things, but essentially it's out of love. Our interaction, communication is driven by love. And this is where the great Sufis, including uh, especially Rumi as, as the, the, the philosopher of love, and Iqbal took it from Rumi and saying, Allah created all of this out of love. Out of love. He created the whole cosmos, including us, with all the bounties, out of love. 
without expecting anything in return. Okay, so that must be incorporated in our programs, yeah, uh, in our discourses. Of course, all this is 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 uh, is Greek to those who are um, familiar only with the secular uh, perspective or secular programs. So is Islam, Iman, Taqwa, Ihsan, Hubbullah must be included in our discourses, programs, and our personal development and all that. Otherwise, it's not complete. Boleh masuk syurga juga, but not maybe the highest. Kalau masuk syurga ni mudah sangat. Okay. Mana ni? Habis dah? Lapar dah? Tak boleh gerak dah? Macam mana ni? Coba ya, Prof. Battery, okay. Okay, okay. Casket, eh? Okay, so... Sorry? I, okay, okay, fine. So, we have to do all this, ibadah, because Allah created us li'abudun, for, for ibadah. We have to also be khalifa, because Allah wants us, had put us here to be khalifa. And then Allah wants us to clean ourselves, tazkiyah. Yuzakihim, wa yu'alimuhum al-kitaba wal-hikmah. Yuzakihim, tazkiyah. And then islah, to do all that, uh, all the good things. Huh? Because there is fasad, then we must bring uh, islah. There's a lot of fasad in the world. We must. In. And then umran is part of khilafah. Is to, to design, this is where the, our engineers come in, the architects come in, to design, construct, build, develop, nourish a virtuous human civilization. So our job is not to just stay in the mosque, zikr, uh, bilam uh, tasbih, then do all the sunnah things, and 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 leave uh, the umran and the khilafah to non-Muslims. Khairiyah wasatiyah is another mission. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhujat linna satu, wa kadalika jalna kum ummatan wasata li takunu shuhada ala nas ummat. Shahada, umat yang menampilkan uh, sifat-sifat kesempurnaan um, keadilan, adil, uh, kecemerlangan, uh, khair, and then uh, tidal, uh, al-mizan, al-tawazun, al-tawassud, that is uh, balance, bukan kesederhanaan. Okay, rahmatan uh, alamin must come in because that is a prophetic mission and we carry that mission. And the scholars are the waratatul anbiya and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Okay, so, okay. And then I remember Khuram Murad in his book, a great brother Khuram Murad, in his early hours, reflection on spiritual, very good, which he conducted at Leicester. In the morning, he would make all these speeches, and I took this from him. Then we 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 say dua iftita. We have dua iftita, and we say, uh, which uh, you know, in the salati wa nusuki wa mahiyya wa mati lillahi rabbil alamin la sharika lahu bi dalika umirt wa ana. Of course, for us, we say min al muslimin, well, for the Prophet. Uh, وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ So this should be the, the motto of all of us. From the Islamic perspective lah. From the pre-Islamic, non-Islamic perspective. Tak payah lah. Okay, now we come to the antithesis. The opposite of, of Khusran. And this is where our, our discourse on Sajatra should also uh, talk about Sangsara. Kesengsaraan. Ha, jangan cakap sejahtera saja. Macam mana? Sengsara. Kan? Ada juga aspek sengsara. Kesengsaraan. So, kejahteraan tak boleh pergi sama-sama dengan kesengsaraan. Ha, so, cari jalan. How to? Jangan sengsara. Ha, jangan sengsara. Sengsara from the Sanskrit uh, word, of course, refers... Dia, Sanskrit words ni banyak merujuk kepada deities, female deities, tuhan-tuhan perempuan. 
Bagusnya dia letak banyak perempuan-perempuan jadi Tuhan. Dan samsara is one of them. <laughs> Tapi it's not supposed to suffer kan. Uh, mungkin she takes care of people who suffer lah agaknya. <laughs> okay. Jadi Al-Khusran very important. Dalam Quran banyak sekali cakap Al-Khusran. Awal-awal lagi di Mekah. Wal-asri innal insana lafi khusrin. By time. Or observe the passage of time. And you will realize that indeed human beings are in state of grave loss. Except those who have true faith and work good deeds. And enjoin one another to the promotion of truth and enjoin one another with patience and perseverance in the pursuit of truth. Awal-awal lagi, di zaman Mekah lagi, menjelaskan. Kamu, wahai orang-orang Mekah yang kaya, yang sombong, yang uh, egoistic, yang selfish, uh, blah, 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 you are in great loss, even with your wealth. So Allah menggunakan... It, it, this is another wisdom of Allah. Dia menggunakan banyak istilah-istilah ekonomi. Sebab the Meccans were business people, were uh, in commerce, commercial. A Meccan is a commercial entrepreneur uh, center. So Allah guna istilah-istilah commercial, khusran, falah, you know, um, all that. Al fawz, victory. Uh, tijarah, yeah. yeah, yeah, tijarah. And shall I tell you of a tijarah you know, that will not, um, it's not going to fail at all? Uh, so this is to 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 penetrate uh, the, the 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 hearts of the Meccan Quraysh. So in the Malay Indonesian languages, Indonesia pun sama juga, sengsara. And sekarang mereka sangat sangat sengsara. Because of this COVID-19, a deplorable, undesirable state of suffering or wretchedness in material or immaterial senses or in physical and in Islam, spiritual dimensions of human existence. Kesengsaraan from Islamic perspective, when you don't have, when in the Quran, when Allah says, Allah is not going to look at you on the day of judgment. Wah, sengsaranya. You know, he's not going to look at you. He's not even to call your name. Allah Akbar. What a great sangsara. And then to be called, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati. What a great joy. Yeah. Okay. So, the Arabic term for loss, doom, suffering, perdition, uh, damage, depravity, and corruption is al-khusran, from the root khasira, which means to lose. And then I give you the dictionary meanings of khasira, khusran, khasara, khasir. Uh, and then you look at the um, um, uh, verses. And of course, I use uh, Surah Al-Asr uh, and many other verses. Then Allah says also, just to show why uh, khus, uh, khusran is to be avoided, because Allah says in the Quran, وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرَ nas لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ Dan لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Tetapi kebanyakan manusia Tidak beriman. Kebanyakan manusia tidak percaya. Kebanyakan manusia tidak mengetahui. Kebanyakan manusia, this is worse, tidak bersyukur. We in the modern world, we have used all the resources of Allah without being grateful to Him. And now He sends a reminder by using this, 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 uh, this virus. Not even a living thing. You know, just distribute sikit-sikit, bagi-bagi sikit-sikit. Ha, dah, teruk. Tak boleh bangun semua. Ha. Tak tahulah Trump boleh survive atau tidak. 
because he took also this uh, what, young anti-malaria I don't think the the egoism the arrogant of 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 Trump review oh. Allah <laughs> Kalau menang lagi dia in this uh, November, then to me that's the end of of the American eagle, and not the world. Ah, well, insyaAllah kita ada, kita ada. dia tak ada. Uh, and is to me kalau menang lagi is the end of America. Ah, tak kira lah embassy record tak record pun, tak kira hamba America. Okay, macam mana ni nak? nak okay. Okay, okay. Fasikun. Most of them are fasikun. Fasik. You go, Allah Akbar. Lepas tu, ah, this is lagi lah. Allah kata, Alladina khasiru anfusahum. They lost themselves. Lost themselves. Lepas tu, worse lagi. Ada lagi. Worse ialah, apa tu? Um, mana ada worse lagi? Okay, ada worse lagi. Al-Akhsarun. Yang paling teruk hilangnya. Worst type. Worst type of losers. Siapa dia? Those who turn others away from the path of Allah. Dia sekat orang berdakwah untuk Islam. Dia tak suka orang dakwah untuk Islam. Dia sekat. Ya, sekarang ni di India dia bunuh dia you know, buat macam-macam uh, di di Myanmar dan sebagainya um, dan macam-macam lagi lah di uh, night okay I come to the end atau saya Nurin you are very happy ya yeah? uh, the end huh. dia tanya dalam hati dia bila Prof nak habis ni I'm coming to the end. In fact, this is the end because there is no conclusion because that's a partner about conclusion. So conclusion will come later. Without <laughs> without references juga. Tak ada references. Tak ada partner buat. The kalb at the center of human personality. Okay? Now, Tansri Zul, ever since uh, Masa di Usim dan di uh, Akept, uh, programs of Akep and Usim, they talk about cult based leadership, cult driven leadership. Tansri Zul developed that uh, in his discourses on Sajatra. Um, but now we need to give the Islamic content of it. Yeah? Islamic content. Um, okay. Because uh, the cult is, uh, has many diseases, um, and Tansri Zul uh, spoke about the importance of cleaning the heart and all that. And in all his uh, lectures, especially <clears throat> lately in the last two years or so, he has been giving the emphasis on the cult, the heart. And remember his, his beautiful infographs, the heart. Denyut, denyut lagi. Gundang, dundang, dundang. <laughs> Otak, gundang, dundang, dundang. Otak dengan jantung and all that. Masya Allah. Uh, I need uh, two weeks to learn from him. Um, so, jadi now, to make it short, because this one, this is very important, but because at the time, I want to go to the model. Okay? Because, because this is a very good model. Uh, which was developed by uh, 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 a British convert, uh, Dr. Abdullah, Abdullah Rahman, who is uh, an Islamic psychologist uh, attached to Cambridge, um, Cambridge Muslim College. And in the last Ramadan, I followed his midnight moments um, and among his uh, lectures, very brief, dear, 20 minutes, just lecture, dear. Uh, okay, let's see, is it possible to get this? Uh, I want make sure we can bring it down, yeah? I want to sit down. How do you do it? Yeah? 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 Okay. 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 
Ah, okay, good, good. Okay. Tak, boleh nampak ke words? Tak nampak, eh? Oh, tak nampak words, okay. Never mind. Because anyway, but this is a very important result of research. He conducted this research. He um, interviewed 18 specialists, 18 specialists, experts in the Islamic psychology, experts in Western psychology, and then developed this, which is very, very useful because I've been thinking about this for many, many years. Benda yang abstract. Macam mana nak nak put in ini? Tan Sri Zul boleh dia buat? Mungkin dia boleh ini. Uh, bergerak lagi tu. Hmm. <laughs> boleh nyawa. Hak <laughs> kita nak tak atas kertas pun tak boleh. Aduh, dia boleh nyawa gerak dung dak dung dak dung dak. Ha? Sorry. Tiga dek. <laughs> Tambah so lagi pak. <laughs> Okay, atas kalau ada kalau ada pointer I can point tapi tak ada pointer. Kalau ah? Ini ni. Ini ya. Ada ya. Okay, okay, oh, good, good, okay. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Ah, ni lah. Baik ngah we engineer ni ada pet do. Okay. Atas kali ah, Allah dan akhirah. Ali atas tu akhirah. Ali bawah syaitan dan dunia. Nah kan? Ah, jadi Oh, okay. mana ni? Huh? Mana? Oh, okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, ha, sini ni. Ni, uh, ni Allah. Atas tu akhirah. Bawah ni dunia. Uh, uh, syaitan, syaitan. Syaitan, bawah tu dunia. So, hati kita duduk tengah ni. Uh, sorry, using Kelantan language buat dah. Ah, patutnya tak boleh pakar tu. Anyway, <laughs> now this is the center, right? This is the self, man. This is man. Uh, it has at the top is ruh, the spirit from Allah. Okay. At the bottom is nafs, the lower self. At the center is kalb. Tapi dia buat dua, just to show you. Tapi sepatutnya satu. Kalb dengan akal. Akal on the right, kalb di tengah-tengah. Actually, kalb duduk tengah. Akal is a function of kalb. And that is the most important thing that we need to know, which is uh, which is very, very different from, from the West. Because mind and intellect are supposed to be in the brain. The heart is supposed to take care of emotions. But dalam Al-Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers only to kalb. There is no word akal in the Quran. Bukan berarti akal tak wujud. Tapi it's to show that kalb is the most important thing that we need to take care of. And akal is the intellectual function, the intellecting function of the kalb. The reasoning function of the kalb. The, intel the rational intelligence capacity of the kalb. In addition to the kalb having the emotional capacity. Yeah? Emosi, uh, ni filem Hindu India ada banyak sini lah. Uh, emosi ya, eh? dalam jantung, uh, hati, Melayu juga. Uh, emotion, but it's also a seed of intuition. Dia dapat ilham-ilham daripada Allah, divine intuition. Dia dapat knowledge, ilm. Di mana knowledge of Allah goes into the heart of the Prophet. Quran says, the knowledge from Allah goes into the heart of the Prophet, the kalb. Of, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wahyu pun masuk dalam kalb of Allah. So, the kalb is a single spiritual entity with multi-functionality. And one of it, the cognitive function is the akal. And antara ini, dah. now, Imam Ghazali tells us very nicely, apa nama ni, analogy Imam Ghazali is, the kalb is raja dalam diri kita. Uh, Akal is Perdana Menteri. Perdana Menteri yang baik lah. Uh, akal Perdana Menteri. Nafsu ni, the guardians, askar-askar. Huh? Uh, tapi askar ni, askar ni mudah dirasuahkan uh, uh, oleh syaitan. Jadi dia tarik kita ke bawah. Dia tarik kepada sini, apa nama ni, sini ialah Al-Nafsul Ammarah Bisu. 
ya sini ialah uh, al-muhlikat benda-benda yang merosakkan kita so nafsu ni tarik kita ke bawah tarik kita ke bawah dan kita juga mengalami apa dikatakan oleh Quran ghaflah heedlessness lupa manusia lupa jadi syaitan pun gunakan peluang ini melalui influence the nafs dengan dan juga nafsu amarah dan juga uh, melalui uh, sifat-sifat buruk menarik kita ke bawah sedangkan roh nak tarik kita ke atas huh? uh, and the qalb is at the center the qalb uh, the roh is pure spirit uh, but the one that influences us is is qalb so the qalb needs the light the divine light from the roh which the roh gets from uh, from Allah so the divine light comes from Allah through the roh roh bagi kepada qalb qalb can then illuminate uh, the nafs yang lain sehingga nafs lawamah jadi uh, nafs amarah jadi nafs lawamah the blaming self akhirnya menjadi uh, the the self at rest the soul at rest or the soul of tranquility uh, tapi most people uh, hopefully including myself are in this center lawama mana kita buat tak baik kita ingat kita taubat buat pula taubat lagi buat pula taubat lagi uh, di sini ialah tempat-tempat uh, para anbiya sahabat aulia as-salihin orang baiklah uh, yang duduk sini yang mungkin dicapai juga oleh orang lain uh, tapi most of us are here this is where he says uh, doctor Abdul, this is the battleground This is the battleground that we go through every day in ourselves, bukan luar, in ourselves. Uh, between uh, the pool of uh, the ruh and the pool of the nafs. The pool of uh, amara and the pool of the upward pool of, of uh, al-mutma'inna. And this one, apa dia? This one, al-munjiyat. Sifat-sifat yang positif, yang baik. Pulling us upward. So we the human personality is in attention as Iqbal said uh, human personality is within attention between the impulses towards that which is good righteous sacred and the impulses to evil uh, to uh, the worldly uh, worldly enjoyments okay So this is very important. So the qalb is at the center and the qalb because it's dynamic is called qalb. Benda yang yang bergolak uh, turning around is called qalb. Uh, and we need to tenangkan dia, isikan dia dengan benda-benda yang uh, iman amal soleh yang baik-baik tadi sehingga membawa this our self becoming a nafsul mutmainna and at the end we are going to be called by Allah uh, at least if not mutsul mutmainna at least uh, as uh, sayyidna ibrahim alaihi salam says yawma la yanfa'u malun wala banun illa man atallaha bi qalbin salim bi qalbin salim yawma la yanfa'u malun wala banun uh, on the day in which uh, your wealth and your children are of no use to you yawma la yanfa'u malun illa 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 man except those who come to Allah bi qalbin salim dengan hati dengan qalb yang salim yang sound yang sihat tidak ada unsur syirik dalamnya tidak ada unsur kufur dalamnya tidak ada unsur riak dalamnya tidak ada unsur takabur dalamnya tidak ada unsur dengki hasad dalamnya tidak ada unsur um, cinta pada dunia cinta kepada ini cinta kepada cinta pada isteri tak apa ya cinta kepada uh, apa ni uh, hubbud dunya wa karahiyatul maut uh, itu yang harus kita bersihkan okay so it's is from him and i am going to stop there so i have uh, several quotations from him but and i said here you can see that to be concluded in the near future inshallah Uh, written at 12 a.m. but actually I finish around 1:30. Sambung balik at 8 o'clock this morning. Patut lah kus. Tapi tu ingat kus pula. Wallahi, wallahi. Ah ini wallahi ini betul. Wallahi dia ingat kus pula. So I took it. Okay lah, sempat lah. The latest I need to arrive is 9:30. And Reba kata, oh don't worry, Prof. 9:30 kita boleh sampai. And dia datang pula pas tengah. 
Pasa, in my mind, and this is my fault. Huh? Sorry, yeah, Prof, it's my fault. So thank you very much for your talk, Kwan Sri. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think you may want to go and give my salam to Tan Sri. Yeah? Uh, we pray for him always, inshallah. Okay, thank you very much, and I, uh, I seek your forgiveness. Yeah, of course, I am ready. Sure, sure. Uh, um, your forgiveness for, for my uh, shortcomings and mistakes, and also for taking uh, too long a time. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. بارك الله فيك. جزاك الله خير. رب كمال. ما شاء الله. I think we invite him to give a Murabi series. He give us a new textbook. Yes, there's a new textbook that we have to study and. Do more research and all these things. I put the conclusions and references plus other things. It can be a reference. Yeah, almost there, inshallah. Okay, so thank you very much, Prof. Okay, well. Of course, I think indeed we have learned a lot from today's deliberation. Because of the time, I just want to mention one or two things. I mean, uh, one thing that I learned from today is your definition of sejahtera insan to be uh, holistic well-being, success and happiness in the world, in this world and in the hereafter. I think that is a very good definition of sejahtera man. And of course, uh, related to that, uh, we have collected a few questions from our online participants. So maybe I start with that while people in the room can think about your question. Eh? So listening to you, Prof, um, we are trying to relate uh, what our university has been doing, the Islamization, integration, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so uh, one question here is how can we connect these two, you know, the, the Islamization, integration, uh, uh, comprehensive excellence to the sejahtera concept? Uh, is it, I mean, sejahtera is maybe the and result of Islamization? Maybe, I'm not sure. So maybe you want to comment on, on this first? Yeah, how to relate this to <clears throat> Thank you very much, um, uh, Prof uh, Paris. Uh, yes, I think this is a very good question indeed because when we formulated uh, the vision and mission, uh, we were not even thinking of uh, Sejahtera, uh, but because we were an Islamic university and the background for the establishment of this Islamic university is the... Um, you might say the movement of Muslim intellectuals all over the world uh, at the advent of the 15th century Hijra, that is the year 1978. Um, it was thought that this was, we are going into a, um, a century uh, in which Islam would prevail and we would no longer be under the influence of colonial or imperial uh, control uh, in education, economics, politics, what have you. So the idea of uh, Islamization of human knowledge, meaning knowledge uh, coming from the Western secular perspectives will have to be reviewed, uh, filtered, Islamicized, uh, and uh, deconstructed so that either they can be adopted or we come up with, with our own new indigenous local uh, products, as Tansui Zul has been doing in USM, um, the indigenization of local knowledge, local wisdom, hikmah kebijaksanaan lokal. So Islamization um, at that time um, was, uh, was a very broad vision covering economics in particular. In fact, uh, the economic, the economies were ahead of the educationists in this regard. Also of law, because Muslim countries were governed by secular law, including Malaysia. So we need to de-secularize the legal system and all that. So you have the law faculty. The, that's why we started with law faculty and economics faculty. Okay. Um, so um, now with this sejahtera uh, discourse and narrative, and also now becoming part of our university, we need to blend the two. 
we need to blend. We need to blend, fuse, integrate in the best possible manner. Um, by, uh, for instance, uh, let's say, for instance, that, um, Prof. Um, uh, Prof. Faris mentioned uh, Jatra. Uh, in fact, anything Islamic has to have the otherworldly dimension. Otherwise, it's not Islamic. Uh, and then also seeking the pleasure of Allah. Okay? Uh, that the niyyah. And then the means have to be good. So, uh, whatever we are doing in the name of Jatra should also be, um, be um, related to Islamicization of human knowledge, which means bringing in the Quranic Sunnatic concepts to complete the Malay concept of Sajatra. Okay? Um, so, so Islamicization also means making things in conformity with Islam. Making things in, so there are Sajatra related programs, projects, which they are all in harmony with Islam, they are already Islamic. But if they are not in harmony, then we need to Islamicize yeah? the, 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 the content of, of um, all those projects, concepts, what have you. Uh, similarly with integration. Um, at that time, in the beginning, when we thought of integration, it was actually integration of knowledge. Okay? But the word integration um, has many other meanings and connotations. Political integration, uh, economic integration, uh, even regional integration, ethnic integration, and so on. But in our university, we're talking about the need to bring the uh, human knowledge, the product of, of the intellect, in line with revealed knowledge. And the word used in Mecca Conference 77 was reveal knowledge. Al-Ulum Al-Lati Ussisat Al-Wahi. And then Al-Ulum Al-Aqliya or Al-Ulum Al-Dunyawiya. Al-Ulum Al-Dunya Al-Ghazali Ulum Al-Dunya Ulum Al-Ulum Al-Din. Okay? So, but it's not just, it is not. Uh, integration of uh, uh, of people on the same status. No, Olumuddin is the one that decides uh, the, the the values. The values are provided by by Dean. Uh, the the uh, the substance is provided by Dunya. Okay, but so the the direction is provided by Dean. The end is defined by Dean. Okay, the means defined by values defined by Dean. But the, the, the substantive knowledge can come from anywhere, okay? Uh, from, 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 you might say, positive knowledge. Uh, I'm using the word positive in the legal sense, uh, like wada'in. Um, okay, now, so, um, so we, 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 we should avoid any form of contradiction, Prof. Yeah? Uh, harmonization is important. And what Tansri Zul has done to me, that's why when, when he links our university with the UNESCO uh, SDE, to me that uh, SDG and also as uh, DE. Okay, RCE, sorry. Uh, Regional Center for Expertise. That is taking Islamization to a higher level, to an international level, which we have also dreamt about, but did not know how to do it. What we did was we went to universities overseas, what MOU, Sana, Sini, internationalization, yeah? what MOU, uh, Sampai, uh, some, I never went to, to uh, South Africa, but Tansri, uh, Prof. Um, Sa'arabi, Alhamdulillah, managed to spread the mission of Islam to, to Brazil, and uh, so on. So, so internationalization and Islamization was seen from a very re restricted perspective. But Tansri Zul opened this up. And we have a new horizon now, a big horizon, number one. Number two, he brings us into engagement with the world. Not just talking about, the, I have been 
talking about the world in my, uh, in my room. I have been uh, lecturing to the wall in my room. You know? I have been talking to the converted. Bagi khutbah kepada orang yang converted. Ding dong, ding dong, year by year. Tans Rizu took us out of this campus and brought us in contact with United Nations, in contact with uh, Universitas 21, in contact with other centers of RCEs. Now there are 21. Huh? Sorry? 200. 200 centers. So, putting us on the world map, which we wanted to do for a long time. And that's good. Okay? So, uh, so these are the, some of the ways, huh, Prof? that um, we need to do and, um, and 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 this has to be a two-way traffic so sejahtera from a malay concept gets its values and ends and means from islam okay uh, because it is the is the the deen deen uh, ad dinul islami is the one that that provides you that and it's coming from Allah. You cannot have kajatra unless it is approved by Him, isn't it? Uh, so that's why what is being done now, much I'm greening of the campus. It's good. You know, we need to take care of. And uh, this is another good thing about Islamization. We never thought about environmental uh, consciousness, but Tansizu came and and then took us to to nature. We thought. Just happy with being a garden of knowledge and virtue. Yeah. Cukup lah. Ha, garden, yeah. Lepas duduk di belakang bukit cantik hijau. Cukup lah. Cukup dah. But Zul takes us to the jungle. And then and to the orang asli. Of course, we did that too before. But not consciously. Not programmed as such. Not under a, a certain concept. Uh, so all this to me is and other forms of Islamization. Or uh, Islam, Islamiyat Aulum uh, Al Jamia, or Islamiyat Al Jamia. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Prof. Okay, thank you. Maybe I can open for one question from the hall, if there is any. Ada, Prof. Ah, yes. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ah, law, syariah. Oh, no. um, based on your presentation on the concept of sejahtera, should UIA propose to the government of Malaysia to change wawasan kemakmuran bersama to wawasan kesejahteraan bersama as our 10-year development plan moving forward? Uh, Ida. <laughs> You're asking the wrong man. Um, shared prosperity was promoted by, by Tone. Okay, Tone. Uh, Tansri Zul has, has uh, of course, endorsed that as well. And I, of course, endorsed that too. Not because it came from Tone or whoever, you know, but because it's a good idea that prosperity has to be shared, right? Uh, of course, uh, it's all rhetorics, huh? political rhetorics, let's not forget. Uh, the, the test is in the implementation. Are you going to get to give to your cronies? Yeah. Your cronies will share. Or your cronies will get the bigger share. Okay, so then, so the problem is not so much slogans, Ida. It's not the rhetoric. It's a substance. But it is a good rhetoric. And maybe if tone is no longer around, Somebody can, can, like for instance to me, Rahmatan il Alamin, for instance, Wasatiya, even Penerapan Nila Nila Islam should all be brought together because all that is from the Quran, is in harmony with the Quran and the Sunnah. So we depoliticize those concepts. As I told Pak Lah dulu, I told Pak Lah, why Pak Lah gagal untuk apa ni, uh, uh, Islam Hadari itu, tak di pick up. I said Pak Lah, we need to depoliticize, number one, depersonalize, jangan jadi milik Pak Lah. Huh? 
And finally, de-ummatize. Uh, sorry, not, not uh, ummatize. Ummatization of the concept. Jadikan konsep umat. Bukan konsep pemimpin politik. Barulah dia boleh hidup. Because wasatiyah is so fundamental. Allah wanted us to be wasati. Allah wants us to carry out rahmatan lil alamin. Allah wants us to apply the Islamic values in all. The values of iman, amal salih, taqwa, ihsan, hubbullah. Infused in all our actions. So it to me, we as a university, we stay above politics. We take all these things objectively, which I have always done. Is, is it in consonance with the Quran and the Sunnah or not? And if the niyyah is good, okay lah, then we can take. So, uh, Ida, kemakmuran bersama dengan kesejahteraan bersama, why do we send you to talk to the politicians? <laughs> spend spend uh, some time with the politicians. Uh, if you cannot do that, ask your, your, your lesser half to do it. Because you are the better half. That's his question, actually. Oh, his question. <laughs> okay, then please ask him. Salam li alayhi. Ask him to go and tell the politicians. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, maybe the last question. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, maybe the last question is, I think, um, uh, I mean, listening to your story about the development of uh, FKN at that time, yeah, right? yeah. because uh, Falsafa... Falsafa Falsafa so pendidikan negara, F, uh, negara pada masa uh, FPN at that point, FPN, and yeah. you were one of the uh, the people the who, team cons who, who, who no, drafted cons it. consulted, yeah. and then I okay. I I did uh, right. I did uh, submit my draft, right. and basically it is in line with that. Right. Basically, uh, apa tujuan dia, uh, and then how it relates to the uh, uh, masyarakat negara. Okay, basically. but but you also mentioned that in your talk that. Mm -hmm. It should be also understood from the perspective of Islam, even though it's not Islam is not mentioned, right. but the Correct. the what you call it the basic philosophy, yeah. basic understanding, uh, basic goal is there's some Islamic values. Uh, definitely. That. definitely. So that's why that uh, there is one question from the Zoom uh, participant saying that uh, some people when they read the word sejahtera, is only refer to maybe the world. Okay. Uh, whereas, I mean, like what you have presented, has, I mean, it's beyond that. I mean, oh, also right. in the hereafter. So how mm -hmm. how can we reconcile or uh, this issue? I mean, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Prof. I think that's a good question, um, and particularly for our non-Muslim brothers and sisters and co-citizens uh, in this country, um, the word sejahtera is used, um, and of course they have to relate it to their own religions or philosophies or worldviews. Um, uh, so, we have to define it from the Islamic perspective because we want to relate it to us as Muslims, right? But we cannot force our definitions, our understanding upon the non-Muslims, okay? We can't force them to say, kepatuhan. Kepercayaan dan kepatuhan kepada Tuhan means ta'at kepada Allah. Tak boleh lah. Because Allah has a different meaning to us than from, to them. So uh, we need to, in other words, when you use these concepts as jatra, tadi apa, shared prosperity, uh, so uh, uh, we need to, to, to give an Islamic definition for the, un for the practice of Muslims and for the understanding of non-Muslims. Umpamanya, for instance, the issue of, of drinking liquor, isn't it, it's, it's, has become political issue uh, under under CMO. Uh, well, we have to tell, to be sejahtera, um, you cannot take liquor. But maybe for them, you have to take liquor to be sejahtera. Mungkin huh. lagi dia. If I don't get a cup of, of, of whiskey every day, I don't feel sejahtera. Huh? Sesakera. <laughs> For, for us, yeah, lah. A different perspective. Kita mesti hormat dia. Bagi orang-orang yang on drugs, dia tak dapat itu. Dia tak sejahtera. Dia sengsara. Dia sengsara. Uh, so, 
this is why this is of course I think the the, the, the wisdom of Tan Sri Zhu that he was able to export a Malay product to 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 Korea and maybe other other countries as well uh, you know because somehow he does not uh, highlight the Islamic connotations but he did say is beyond you know well-being you know, beyond beyond it and then there is a spiritual dimension but he doesn't he doesn't explain the content of that spiritual dimension because the spiritual dimension to us basically is hubungan kita dengan Allah it be iman kita dengan Allah but Tan Sri Zhu uses the word spiritual dimension the heart the heart is being now used in the west as well tapi the understanding of the heart in the west is different from our understanding of the qalb in islam uh, so um, but at least we need to to make people aware of the islamic perspective without forcing others as we have been doing in this university for the last uh, 35 years we do not force people uh, we we explain we impart we engage we try to make them understand but never to make them accept Islam uh, because of us. But they have accepted Islam because they see the good character in some of us, maybe, alhamdulillah. So, um, Prof. Um, Faris, uh, FRN, of course, has been changed to FRK, isn't it? For uh, uh, FPM. For uh, Safa Pendidikan, now, now it's Kebangsaan. Uh, now, um, some people even question why talking about a good citizen, you know, because that's why in our university, uh, this is where maybe also in USIM, I do not know, but in our university, because we are international from the beginning, USIM started as a national university uh, and therefore bound by the Fasafah Pendidikan Negara. Kita Kita tidak bound by falsafah pendidikan negara atau kebangsaan. Falsafah pendidikan Islam was the one that 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 influenced our curriculum building. Okay, we started as a company. This university doesn't even belong to Malaysia. Pelik, kan? It's a paradox. It belongs to the board of governors, which includes Malaysia. Mana shared property lah, uh, shared, not prosperity. Sebab kita tidak prosperous lagi. Uh, nah share juga, share. tak share juga, tak share juga. Bolok kita semua. <laughs> kape aja lah. Dia pun bagi kape aja. Kape pun jut kape aja. Uh, bukan bukannya woolen kape. Uh. So um, jadi now. So that's why um, kita kena juga talk about the Islamic philosophy of higher education. Okay, there are overlaps. Dalam insan sejahtera, dalam uh, kesejahteraan diri, fine. But falsafah pendidikan Islam, as formulated in the Meccan Conference of 1977, and I was lucky to be there, came out in the, in the book. Fasafah pendidikan Islam. We should be guided by that. So, citizenship is just one stage. But in the Fasafah Kebangsaan, you stop at citizenship. We don't go beyond. But if you follow Fasafah pendidikan Islam, um, in fact, what we are trying, what IIU is trying to do, as Prof. Faris said uh, in several meetings before, is to implement, in a way, that concept of holistic integrated vision of education di mana ilmu dunia dan ilmu agama digabungkan digabung jalin of course usi makes it very very clear in the philosophy of al jam'u bainal aqul bainal ilmu naqli dan ilmu aqli they make it very very clear tapi kita dalam concept integration ada persamaan i don't see it as something different it's just a different way of 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 uh, uh, formulating it and articulating it. So, uh, 
from time to time, we need also to, to make people aware of, of the falsafa pendidikan as conceived by Muslim educationists, the experts in the field. Um, for instance, for the idea of, of um, edic, uh, the, uh, the, the, the idea of education as to produce al insan al saleh. I read it first time dalam buku Muhammad Qutub, al tarbiyah al islamiyah which he wrote uh, in the 70s okay? uh, or 60s, and I read it. Uh, when I was in UKM. So um, then I used the idea of pendidikan ialah untuk melahirkan insan saleh, the virtuous, the righteous human being. Bukannya the good citizen. Of course, Prof. Naqib pun cakap begitu. But in my case, I got it from Muhammad Qutub. And I found that book very, very Useful indeed, even to this day. So, uh, itulah um, sedikitnya, uh, Prof, on the falsafah pendidikan negara. And uh, but, but to oh, well, this is another topic lah. How is it going to be implemented? But Tan Sri Zul came out with a with a good book, uh, edited with with Rosnani Hashim, falsafah pendidikan negara from a new perspective. Yeah, the educational. Uh, in, in, in Malay, apa nama falsafah? Pendidikan negara, kebangsaan, dari perspektif yang baru, something like that. Is there an English version to it? Tak ada kan? Oh, okay. So that's good. But he highlights all that. But Tan Sri Zul is saying, you need to go back to the philosophy. What I agree is, for Malaysia, yes. But for the whole Muslim world, we need to go back to the philosophy of education in the Quran and the Sunnah. Khalas. Okay? Okay. Uh, last question, which is I started with at uh, the beginning. How is all this thing with your Vision 2077 project? Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much, Prof. Very much. Thank you very much. Now, Vision 2077 is about how we have to prepare the next generation, the younger generation, for a better um, Muslim Ummah uh, in 2077, uh, actually November 18, 17, 2076, when the 16th century will come to Malaysia. Ada tak ada Malaysia, Allah tak tahu lagi lah, tak apalah. We leave all those imponderables to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's going to happen to us? Uh, but we have to plan. We, at least we set the goals, we set the foundations, and let others then, you know, revise, rework, redo, correct, blah, blah, all the way until 2777. Okay. Now, we, now, this is relevant to our conceptualization of Sejahtera because we are going to talk in Malay to the younger generation out there. Of course, our work is in English. We're going to, hopefully, Prof., we come up with a book, inshallah. All the, the clusters, what are the clusters? We put together in one book, including Ida punya cluster, put in, in one book in English, then get somebody to translate it, and then we go out. So we will have to come up with kesejahteraan juga. We got to talk about al-fala. But then the ultimate goals, too, okay? the goals, I'm going to work after this. Starting tomorrow, Prof, I'm going to work on the new vision for 2077. Um, so I, I have to bring in the goals, the ends uh, which a deen prescribes. What kind of society? The wasatiyah comes in, khairiyah comes in, all that. Eh? Uh, and then the kesejahteraan comes in also. So uh, it can be part of it. Uh, it can be part of it. And I'm, I'm going to also make it part of it, inshallah, so that whatever, whatever institution, whatever organization in IIUM which is working on that, uh, should be able to, to, to get on board of Vision 2077. Or Vision 2077 could get on board of the Sejahtera uh, vision. So, so it is, it is uh, what you call it, a synergy uh, of, um, uh, of, of, of two um, 
actually not identical visions, but closely related visions. Okay, Prof. Okay. okay. So I think with that, it's, uh, it's almost 12 o'clock. So we take this opportunity to thank Professor Kamal for his insightful uh, ideas, uh, looking forward, uh, Vision 2077, and how we can bring the Sejahtera concept into the framework, uh, as well as how to bring our university forward, inshallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your good deeds, Prof, and give you the strength to continue your jihad, inshallah. Okay, thank you very much. With that, I will pass the session to our brother, Dr. Zainuri. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Prof. Aris. Um, a lot to chew, a lot to digest, but hopefully everybody takes time to do that. Um, as a request, Prof, about your manuscript today, is it is it half baked? <laughs> Completely baked. Somebody wants not it. not complete, but it can be it can be distributed already. It's not complete because there's no conclusion yet. All right. Conclusion is coming, maybe after one week, uh, uh, because before, I've got to work on other things. Before we post it to our website, would you like to complete it first, or can we post it as? I it think is? that's better, isn't it? Is it? So I work on it tomorrow, inshallah, uh, and then to, maybe in a couple of days I'll finish the the conclusion. Plus the references. Okay. The bibliography is not All there. Right. Okay. So give me a couple of days. All okay. Right? So for the person who's requesting, the persons uh -huh. who are requesting this, I hope you be patient. Uh, we will post it on our website, KCA website, Good. hopefully by next week, end of okay, next week. Okay, inshallah. Okay. As in, while well, we're talking about Sejahtera in Malay, Malay culture, we always have tokens. <laughs> okay, so I would like to invite. Is is is, is Islamic token or not? No. Uh, <laughs> so we like to invite uh, Puan Sri Mastra oh, again uh, to give away our token of appreciation to uh, Prof Kamal and Prof Mat Faris. We have a copy of the certificate, Prof, on the. Uh, UIA becoming the regional oh, center. Okay. Oh, okay. I saw with the heart there. He always has a There's a copy. Kofaris dia tak tahu kita ngai dia tu. Okay, uh, for Prof Faris tu, ah, yeah. ah. ada juga, ada, ada. ada. And can I invite uh, Associate Professor Dr. Zulkifli to hand over the token for Puan Sri? Uh. Oh. Okay, Alhamdulillah. 
we have come to the end of <laughs> we have come to the end of our session we would like to thank prof uh, kamal hasan for his willingness to deliver his talk and hopefully he would come back for more sessions and also to prof uh, faris for his willingness to be the moderator we apologize for any shortcomings particularly on the small number of audience in this hall and also the number of uh, questions that we can entertain in this session thank you very much and we look forward to seeing you in the next murabi session wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh attendees in the hall lunch is served at the banquet hall